All right, peace. It's Bronzeburg here with another video. Before I begin, like and subscribe. Thank you. So I've been watching for a couple of days now, or I guess in the last week, this whole entire uh, Roe versus Wade verdict coming along, it being overturned. I did my slight research on it. And I decided today that I wanted to pull back a video that I was going to do in the past. And I, I, I figured I'd bring it out today and also do another video in which I want men to understand to also go into the idea about a conversation I had before about men understanding the type of women they're dealing with. Um, I still get today that a lot of brothers in particular, that is, usually make the wrong decisions, usually go with women that have baggage, therefore have kids in particular, where now a lot of things become more sensitive just because of the fact of the matter that that man wants to take care of that person's child or their own child that in accordance to the mother that already had two or three kids or more. So that's gonna be a video that's gonna come up. But today I wanted to go over a topic of conversation in which so-called black men are being called to the stand to take more responsibility, to voice up their concerns and be more voiceful when it comes to the rights about abortion, right? And my thing about it is this, I actually uh, found something not really amusing, but just knew that um, it was going to be taken the wrong way. And this might fuel the 2024 election to be a big deal of how things will pan out with, let's say, Joe Biden, Trump, and a couple of other people who's dedicating themselves to wanting to be a candidate for the 2024 election. The midterms is up right now. We don't know what's going on and blah, 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 blah. blah. But um, it's really funny. Um, I was watching this and I was seeing that um, at one of Trump's rallies, one of the Illinois Republicans made a Freudian slip. And I thought to myself, more than likely, someone from probably Black Lives Matter, Black Lesbians Matter, or someone who's so-called Black or the minority, or so-called white people who are rebellious against fellow so-called white people might take it and run. and might try to say that we definitely deem Trump and his constituents as direct derelicts because of the fact of the matter that this woman had said such a, a statement that means white supremacy. <laughs> but that's here no there, man. I'm gonna show you the video, give you my commentary about it. So Pete. Fair use. When it comes to abortion rights, polls show that over two thirds of black American adults say abortion should be legal, which is higher uh, than the proportion among either white or Latinx adults. In the black community specifically, some say it's time for black men to speak up on the need to protect abortion rights. In an op-ed for the Miami Herald, four black men lawmakers in Florida write, quote, we are especially concerned because abortion is health care and the lack of access to health care disproportionately affects black women and families joining us is one of the authors of that article, Florida State Rep And before, before we begin, I'm not doubting this brother that's on the right. I understand maybe he's one of those dudes that's in a political office that really wants to see the so-called black community uh, survive and prosper. Uh, my thing is, since day one, I'm not a pro-black. I do believe in so-called black people becoming better in their conditions. I do believe there's a reason why we got here. I do believe there's a reason why there's all this angst between so-called black men and so-called black women. But I do understand at the end of the day, especially myself as a so-called black man, I am abandoned and I am not a concern. And if I am a concern, I'm only a concern for amusement, not for how seriously they can take me. At the end of the day, whether we call it white supremacy, white rulership, or this, that, and the third, there should be the understanding that so-called white people or the people that's in rulership know exactly who we are. This has been said by plenty of YouTubers, even my favorite YouTuber, before I came on YouTube to make these videos in which they understand who we are, what we're about, what is our history, and they play these gymnastics and all these different things out there because they understand the chaos. So-called black man must better himself. Even I'm on a mission to better myself. So should you. Representative Kevin Chambliss. So are there enough black men speaking out for abortion rights and, and really reproductive freedom right now? And if not, why not? Um, one thing for and I can already tell this is going to be one of those things where he's going to kowtow to exactly what the so-called black woman is saying. No, no, no uh, problem against this, brother. I just know what's going to happen. 
that question and thanks for having me here. And absolutely not. Uh, I was literally at an abortion rally um, over the weekend and I was, I felt so much like the minority because I could count the number of black men in a crowd of about a thousand on my two hands. And that's unacceptable when we know that African-American women are disproportionately affected by um, these court rulings. And so... Now, before he can, continues, my good guess is, and this is just a good guess, the so-called black man is starting to realize how abandoned he is from the country or just the world itself. And he feels as if the so-called black man, the so-called black woman does not like him. See, the thing about it is I've gotten into so many conversations, whether it be panels in real life, where, you know, it's always the same conversation. Black men ain't shit. Black men is not worthy. Black men are duskies, all these different things. Then they try to change it. They play semantics when they sit up there and use controversial phrases or controversial words like dusties to mean that it can apply to anyone and it's not specifically geared towards so-called black men. Complete bullshit. And my thing about it is, is that, yeah, so-called black men are tired. Um, I will never say that so-called black men should have a, a real big problem with the so-called black woman. I won't say that. I, I, I think there's, there's justifiable reasons why, but at the same time, if you do care, then care for it. But I won't play these, these games like the so-called black man realizes that the so-called black woman wants to be able to have a seat at the table and be able to still be on the same accord in an equilibrium of the so-called white woman, not even understanding the so-called white woman is the reason why a lot, of this, a lot of this problems is going on because of the fight that she has with the so-called white man because he's in rulership. So everything that trickled down between so-called white people basically trickled down to so-called black people. So-called black men are tired. We have to step up, we have to speak up because we also know that our communities can be quite conservative. And when they don't see- Which was the right way all along. See themselves in the conversation, they don't necessarily pay attention to the conversation. So our presence means something when it comes to not only standing up um, and letting people know that we are black men, that we are pro-choice, but also making sure that education around why abortion is healthcare is important that our communities know this is not. Well, I'll say this. <clears throat> I do believe that also myself, what I try to enrich myself on doing is that, um, you know, take time to yourself to actually learn these things. You know what I'm saying? Understand exactly what came along with this, even the origin about talking about distribution of contraceptives and all these different uh, pregnancy preventions and all these different things like that. I mean, easy, easy. But, you know, certain people do these different things, such as basically cognitive dissonance and more of a lot of these different things to evade having conversations or evade doing research. We've all become lazy, even myself to a certain degree. I will never admit that I haven't became, uh, you know, lazy to certain things when it comes to research. But I think believe in abortion, so-called black men run away from this topic of conversation because once they hear it's aligned with so-called white supremacy or feminism, they want to give it a go. They're like, I'm not having it today, man. <laughs> you got it, so-called black woman. You got it, queen. I don't want to hear it a one issue topic. This deals with the lives of the women that we love. We are the sons, the brothers, the fathers. I'm a father of a newborn baby girl. Um, you know, the, the cousins, the friends of women who participate in one of the most dangerous surgeries that they'll ever participate in in their lives. We need to stand beside them. We need to stand behind them and let the world know um, that we believe that their body belongs to them. And the so-called black men inherit inherently know that. Why do you think they have such a hard time when it comes to child support? Because they understand that the so-called black woman is usually going to win. <laughs> the system, and I, and I really don't care what people say when I make this statement, the system is geared towards women, not men. And as fucked up as it seems, you would figure that the ones at the top is making it really difficult, in which I still don't understand. I have a lot of confusion when it comes to this, that if it's supposed to be geared towards women, where does this come from? Why is it that the origin? And I know this is controversial to say that, but I mean, this is not talking points because I'm related to a particular sector or this, this different things on YouTube. It's just what I think. And especially going off of this dangerous surgery and stuff like that, we must take into account, especially something like pan, Planned Parenthood, who does it come from? 
Who is it related to? Who is it? Who is the ones responsible for that? Besides Margaret Sanger, Fania Mendel, and Ethel Byrne, or Bryn. You understand? And you can look these women up. They're responsible for one of the first direct clinics for abortion here in New York, Brownsville, Brooklyn, in about the 1900s. And especially with this, Margaret Sanger definitely had some ties some, to some elite people. But at the same time, she got arrested because she was out there trying to go against an act called the Comstock Act of 1873, spelled C-O-M-S-T-O-C-K, Act of 1873. She got caught. And even though that clinic in particular was short-lived because of all that practices they've done in there, they still went ahead and created the whole entire Planned Parenthood that you know of today. That it shouldn't be controlled or dictated by any government. You mentioned that um, in some instances, there is a conservative, uh, let's say, thread uh, in some black uh, male communities, whether they be um, faith communities, fraternities. Um, so can you speak to where that comes from? Um, because one of the things that I note is that, and Orrin, Orrin Jacobson from Men for Choice, as I know you know, always talks about how it's really the conservative, anti-choice men that are real loud, um, and everybody else is pretty quiet. But are Black men being quiet because they agree with the anti-choice men, you think? Mm. So-called Black men are being relatively quiet, quote-unquote, because they're tired. I've always keep saying it and I will keep saying it. The problem is, is that now what I'm starting to see, and this is just me analyzing, I, I'm not gonna back this up by data or research. This is all just analytics, as in I'm just analyzing. I'm just making my whole entire commentary based off of opinion when I say this. Now it's getting to a point where so-called black men are so tired that they're looking at themselves and trying to argue with fellow so-called black men. I find it very disparaging and very disappointing when one of the times I'm on a panel, I can hear out a so-called black man's mouth that he says that black men are useless. Black men are this, a black man is that. And this is a so-called gay man. <laughs> and I'm not saying that just because of that particular, there's been many conversations I've heard this where we're divided on orientation and then divided on uh, what our education level is, what is our financial background and all this other stuff. So-called black men is becoming so catty that they're starting to be like so-called black women. You understand? And this is the whole entire nature of women to argue amongst themselves. But us as men, we're doing a horrible job too. So the thing about it is, is that if so-called black men want to come together and really try to understand things, we need to work on ourselves first. And the so-called black women that want to come along and actually be supportive, she will. But if they want to, I'm not, I mean, it's nothing wrong with questioning the things that's out there. That's why I have no problem doing commentary and being a little uh, fair and balanced to hear this woman give her questions, her testimonies, and hear from other people. But at the same time, I will not deny at the end of the day, this whole entire divide and conquer strategy is working full, full, full fold. And it's going to continue with inflation and everything else. I think there's definitely, and we'll use your term, a thread um, of that in the community. And many times that's because they have not engaged in the conversation. Many times that's because- Yes, they did, and they got shut out. Yes, they did. Especially because now it's that whole entire arrogant way of thinking. Uh, men just think with their dicks. And men, and I mean, to a certain degree, that's actually true. You understand that certain men think with their, their dicks. They don't think responsibly about who they sleep with. Never had a formal conversation. Never sat up there and had sex talk. That was the conversation he had. But never had a full conversation like, look, listen, I'm going to wear contraceptives because I don't want to be a father right now. Or if I do, you know to wear, do you wear IUD? Do you wear uh, birth control? Do you take birth control? You should because I don't want to be a father right now. And, you know, Certain men, I'm not going to say for all men, but there's certain men, but not a lot of men, that it is not the fault of them why the woman got pregnant. But more times than not, it is their fault. They have to take responsibility. As they might have been a familiar participant as, you know, the, the father, the boyfriend, um, and or the husband of someone who had to make this difficult choice and so they don't want to speak it wasn't a difficult choice how 
women are pop plan B pills like it's Skittles. How is it a difficult choice? <laughs> I'm, I'm really under the notion this brother may say what he's saying and he really will align in it. But in my opinion, it's not a difficult choice. The woman that just feels as if the man is not right for him, right for her, will go automatically to the abortion clinic once she find out this man is a piece of shit or she really doesn't like him, go ahead and get the abortion and walk right out. Or take the plan B pill and be like, get out of my face. I don't need you no more. You're useless. I don't want to hear there's no difficult choice. That doesn't say it for everybody. But of course, there's going to be one of these type of things where they bring in these like anomaly arguments and they're going to be able to bring it, express it. I'm going to express it in a little bit. Uh, as much as they could speak up, one, because they don't really know a lot about it. And many times they don't want people to really know exactly how they feel. And honestly, a lot of that has to do with religious preferences. A lot of that has to do with them thinking about it from a one-sided view. And that's why we want to have this conversation. Because look, I know that as we begin to engage Black men, that we're not going to always agree. But I guarantee you, even if we don't agree on, um, on, on the subject completely, at the end of the conversation, both of us will be more educated on the subject. And that is um, making sure that we both leave that conversation knowing that abortion is health care. We're talking about reproductive health care rights for women who many times have a higher death rate at pregnancy than any other demographic. Which is true, because that also comes with the idea of malpractice, which a lot of these doctors are very negligent on how it comes to childbirth, especially with so-called black women. That is a fact. I know that's true that he's saying that. But one of the things that I was going to bring up earlier um, from the conversation is that whether it's a so-called black woman or a radical so-called white woman, usually they like to bring up the anomaly about how um, something is you know, sensitive as grape. I'm not going to say the real word, but something such as uh, assertive as grape that um, like they try to pretend like it's a common case that a reason why a woman becomes pregnant with a child is because she got graped, you know? And, and that's the problem with this social climate, in my opinion, because we have to get down to the data and the statistics, how common it is for a woman to get graped and become pregnant from graping. Am I denying the fact of the matter there aren't women out there at a good, good proportion that could get graped and become pregnant from it? No, I will not deny it. But to sit up there and say that it's a common reason why women decide to make the difficult decision on having a child or not having a child or going the abortion route, I won't say that. And I refuse to believe that, whether it's statistically or whatever, the stats is out there. It's not common. The reason why a lot of these common abortions come along is because people are irresponsible. That's why. And when black children are, are, are dying at a higher rate as well. And so that's an important conversation for our community to have, and we're ready to engage them on it. And also in having that conversation, brother, with no due respect, also talking about the mental health of our so-called black kids. That's one thing that we usually tend to neglect. The fact of the matter that suicide rates is up with so-called black boys and so-called black girls. We're being fed all this propaganda to feel like we're not worth anything to the society. So what do you expect? And then especially if you live in a minority or a, a poverty-stricken community, you feel like you're not worth anything. In terms of the way in which we can frame this particular issue, I mean, Congressman Ayanna Presley talks about anti-abortion laws as being rooted in white supremacy. I mean, how can, what, what kind of language is effective with black men and engaging them on this issue? Um, because I think naturally they think, oh, abortion, that's a woman's issue, and they go and do something else. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's about black men standing up for black women, um, us speaking out and supporting black women. They are the demographic that's most disproportionately affected by this. And if we love our sisters the way that we say that we do, then we have to stand with them, that we have to let them know that we support them, whatever decision that they choose to make. But we want to make sure that as they make that decision, that they have the best health care services available. Oh, sorry to burst your bubble, brother, but at the end of the day, whether you take it as disrespect or not, the so-called black woman does not value the so-called black man's opinion. And I apologize to myself for getting in these worthless conversations, whether it's been the last couple of weeks 
or the last year and this, that, and the third, when I already had the understanding so-called black women do not care. <laughs> and this is not about me red pill raging and all this nonsense these like sectors like the manosphere like to say and stuff like that. It, ha it has nothing to do with that. It's just a fact, no matter at the end of the day, that's what they're doing in society. So-called black men have woken up to the point the so-called black woman only values the so-called white man and the so-called white rulership. They want to have the seat at the table, but they're being used. <laughs> the so-called white woman is being used. All these other people is being used in some type of faction, especially when it comes to rulership. They will look to the one that is ruling, not the one who's losing, right? Just like if you see in Africa, you know how they have all those countries out there in Africa being affected by um, the Chinese rulership? Who are they going to pay attention to? The so-called Chinese man. They dare not say nothing to the so-called Chinese woman because the Chinese woman is going to sit up there and whoop their ass too. <laughs> so you got those African women out there that's going to pay attention to the Chinese man, not the Chinese, not the, the so-called African man. And that's in certain countries in Africa. But to reel it all back, I understand where his brother is coming from. He has a passion, he has a drive. But at the end of the day, none of this stuff is going to become better. Sorry to sound like a pessimist, but at the end of the day, it's the truth. They're having our babies. They are the people who are loving us. We came from black women. And watch, watch what she said. Watch what this woman is going to say, because they always like to reference old school things. She's going to reference a rap artist you already know and going to try to start quoting this song, but going to catch herself. And so we should be standing beside them every step of the way. We have to articulate that as much as we can, because Again, we're trying to support black women, and we know that when we support black women, that we support all women and making sure that they know that. That's the problem, globalist type of mindset, where you start trying to look at the world for every solution, and you're not focusing on, on your individual self or not understanding the people around you. I can tell that brother is morphed in that. That is a problem. Their bodies are theirs, and their choice is theirs. I'm singing Tupac in my head. <laughs> um, just then, you know, we came from a woman. Okay, like, I'm not going to do it. Uh, I'm not, Ari. I'm not going to start rapping. Representative Kevin Chambliss, I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for your perspective. And I told you that. So, brothers, just be on the lookout for that. I'm not here to make any uh, divide and conquer strategies. I am not here to be a gender war type of uh, enabler. That's not my go-to. That's not my M.O. But I just want to bring this out because, in my opinion, it's just a lot of stuff in this society that we're seeing now. Roe versus Wade. Roe versus Wade trickles down to um, what do they think men is because this society is starting to become anti-men in some type of faction. And um, then it trickles down to the so-called black men don't do nothing. <laughs> That's always going to be the argument for you so-called black men, especially you brothers that need to have a fresh wake-up call about what the so-called black woman at large thinks about you. I mean, I'm not going to say all so-called black women, but I will say a good majority or most so-called black women think this way about you. Peace.